Welcome to this episode of Dining at Disney, where today we're going to be reviewing Coral Reef at Epcot in Future World. We ate, we conquered, and we scored it, and we're going to share our results with you. Hello, I'm Ray, here with fellow collaborators on the Rocky Mountain Mouse, Jeff. Do, 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 do. Jody. And our junior contributors, Emma, Aubrey, and Bethany. Sweet. <laughs> and we're covered with under the sea. As today, we're going to be reviewing Coral Reef over in Epcot at Future World. So we're going to start with Disney's description on the website. Jeff, would you mind reading that to us? Enjoy intimate dining and spectacular views of a living coral reef and the 4,000 amazing sea creatures who call it home. So yes, as you can see by the picture, the restaurant's situated inside of, or onto the side of the large saltwater tank they have. So we're going to jump right into the food. First score that we have is food presentation, where we scored it at a 9, which is odd because nobody actually gave it a score of 9, but we hovered around it and it got a 9. So let's talk about the food presentation. What did you think of how the food was presented at Coral Reef? I personally thought it was great. I had salmon again. This was my second dish of our trip. A salmon? Free. You? Yeah, yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> three times. And it was, it was plated very well and it looked really nice. Jeff, how about your steak? Uh, it, you know, takes a special person to go to a seafood restaurant and order steak. But <laughs> it, it was fine. Uh, it looked great. Um, and I ordered the shrimp and grits like most of the rest of the table and I felt the presentation was excellent. Uh, I would say it was on par with what we saw over at Tony's. I think the shrimp and grits are probably why I felt bad about my steak. Uh, you kind of like, okay, I'll get steak here and then they come out the shrimp and grits. I'm like, uh, did that wrong. All right, so any other comments on the presentation? Just fairly okay. straightforward. Yeah. yeah, even, well, yeah, even the dessert looked good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it did look really good. Yeah, it did look good. <laughs> and we will get to that. <laughs> so, just trying to put the cart before the horse. Uh, so let's move on to the food quality and flavor of the entree. Um, as a group, we came out at an eight. Um, so let's talk about the individual uh, meals that we had. Jody, let's start with you and the salmon. Um, it was really fantastic. I had salmon the night before at 50's Diner. It was out of the ballpark better than what I had experienced there. Um, it came with a sauce on it that I remember being pretty savory. Um, and other than that, it was moist and good and I, I, no complaints. And didn't you have the sauce on the side? Yeah. And did you just dip? We did. Dip it was your... there to be dipped, but I, I liked it how it was. So oh, okay, great. Right. And uh, Aubrey, you had the salmon had as well, salmon. didn't you? Yep. And what did you think of the salmon? Uh, the salmon was good, but I don't think it was the best salmon I've ever had. Like, mine had the seasoning on the outside and kind of just came off when I tried to cut into it, but it was good tasting. Okay. Do you remember what was on the side? Any there vegetables? vegetables? There are vegetables. There's like rice and... and I got mashed potatoes. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So let's go on to the steak dish. Emma, why don't you start telling us about your steak? <clears throat> actually really good. It was seasoned well. In some spaces there was some fat, but it was starting to chew, but it was, it was the size it was good. And there were mashed potatoes, and I like those. I wanted to try something else, but I don't really like seafood, so it was steak. Maybe the most, oh, probably the most telling thing is I can't, it doesn't stand out. Like, I remember being good, but I can't say that like, it wasn't like Tony's where I was like, okay, yeah. I was going to ask, was it better or worse than Tony's? So I think was Tony's better. was better. I, I just, it, to, to, as of we filmed this today, as of this moment, uh, I just don't really remember much of it. I remember thinking it was good, but it doesn't stand out. Uh, well, okay. And then on my entree, uh, I got the shrimp and grits, and I think several at the table got the shrimp and grits. And it was just cooked shrimp over a bed of... Um, cheese grits and then it had succotash on the top that was mixed with andouille sausage 
And uh, I do not like, I'm like Emma, I don't like seafood. I tended to go to the coast, whether that be California or Florida, and if I eat seafood, I like it. And so I hesitate less when I'm near the ocean and near a saltwater tank, apparently, uh, to go for <laughs> the, the seafood. So I got the shrimp, and I don't like shrimp, and I loved it. It was cooked really well. Um, the cheese grits were to die for, and then the succotash on the top was w well seasoned. It had a little bit of Cajun seasoning, so there was just a little bit of heat, but not terrible. Uh, the andouille sausage I didn't care for. It was rubbery, and that was... I, I looked at the, the menu, and I thought, hmm, andouille sausage is there, so if I don't like the shrimp, I'll eat the sausage, and it ended up being the reverse. So I really liked it. Did anybody else try? Uh, Jeff, I think you probably tried some yeah, of it. Yeah, I tried it, and uh, I immediately, it's, it's just one of those moments where if I had to do it over again, I definitely would have ordered that. I, look, I hate shrimp. I mean, they're like rubbery. You always have to worry if they're cleaned out, that whole nine yards. So I, I, I shy away from them, but the, the flavor profile with the grits and the shrimp and the sausage, I, the sausage really was a little, the texture was funny, but the flavor profile was outstanding. I think if that had been the entree that I ordered, that would have uh, probably changed my views of things. Uh, did you get a chance to try it, Joe? I didn't. Hmm. Uh, and then before we move off of the entrees, I don't know why I keep forgetting about appetizers every time we have them. But I did. I had the lobster bisque, and I just ordered it because there's a TV show that makes fun of lobster bisque that I like, and so I <laughs> wanted that experience. Um, and it was outstanding. It was really creamy and well seasoned. This is probably a good spot to say that uh, if you're looking, so the, we've established in other episodes the water in Orlando is less than desirable, but if, you, um, if you're if you looking for a place to get hydrated with um, carbonated beverage, this is the place to go because those <laughs> cups, oh man, they bulge and so you really get a lot. So I, it was awesome. So the, the weight, the, you know, the server has to do very little, tons of, uh, uh, tons of uh, Coke Zero in the house, so that was good. Yeah, so if you if you actually watched the vlog, the trip vlog that we were at the restaurant, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to go look at it. But Jeff was very impressed with what we named his bulging beverage. Um, so, and there were parts I had to leave out that were probably inappropriate. Wow, I don't remember any of that. I'm glad that Jeff continues to rate the beverage quality of all of our restaurants. All right, any other thoughts or comments on the entrees before we move on? Excellent. So eight was a deserved score, it sounds like. Um, then let's go ahead and move on to the desserts. This was a fun one. Let's start with what I consider the bottom of the barrel, Jody. <gasps> uh, that's why I said bottom of the that's barrel. Right. So I'm really sorry, Coral Reef. I would not recommend it and I didn't really like it and I'm easy to please a dessert so I remember having like one or two bites and didn't like it. the texture was off the flavor was bland and I just didn't think it was worth the calorie investment Sorry. well what was interesting to me about that because I actually tried it and I was like you I didn't like it at all um, on the plate everything it was deconstructed and when I went to cut into the puff pastry which puff pastry is buttery it should right. just crunch and right off in your mouth and i was like you can hear me on the video going Arr! Arr! and i'm getting angry at the plate because i can't get the spoon so, through it it's, it's funny because when we started this i was really trying to remember what i had it was that forgettable for me yeah. and it shouldn't have been but it was okay jeff let me just say uh i was all excited for a flourless lava cake it came out, it looked okay. I mean, there was a little sign of trouble a little bit when they first brought it out, but that was, uh, that was extremely, <laughs> extremely disappointing. It was just like super bland is kind of the best way to explain it. So I was expecting for like a chocolatey sensation kind of contrasted with the, um, the cooling tart of the raspberry. Sorry about that. Um, but it didn't work. That was a, that was a bad dessert, bottom line. So if you'll remember back to our Tony's Town Square review where Jeff said it was impossible to screw up chocolate. <laughs> yeah, Coral it Reef did it for him. <laughs> I, yeah, I stand corrected. Apparently there is a special skill out there where you can take chocolate and really mess it up. And then I got the uh, key lime tart. And, uh, it was one of the best desserts. Still doesn't match the cheesecake at Tony's, but the best. Uh, the best. one of the best desserts that I've had on property. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Jeff, I know you did try it. 
Um, I, for me, yeah, most definitely. I, I, I actually think it's pretty competitive with any dessert that we had, um, and I really like Tony's cheesecake, but that was that was different. The flavor profile was really good. So. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs up on that. So obviously a complete mixed bag on the desserts, and I think that's why I got the six, because mm -hmm. it went from as high as nine down to three, which I think was probably your dessert, Sorry, Jody. So, uh, mixed bag on the desserts. Um, let's move on to food overall. So this includes everything that you tasted at the table. What are your thoughts? We gave it a seven as a group. Um, how do you feel about that score for the overall food at Coral Reef? I personally feel like that's pretty great. Um, given my dessert, had I had your dessert, my score would have been much higher. So. Yeah, I think it's a fair score. I mean, I, I, I think some of us are sitting here, if we didn't have the grits or the bisque or, really, Ray, you did well, actually, think about it. What's up with that? I mean, so Ray did, Ray did really well, for all of you people out there who want to know, um, in ordering. Um, but for the rest of us, like, for me, it's, it's really hard to recall almost everything else. And so I think seven's a fair score because it's like, it's a good restaurant, but uh, it doesn't pop for me at all. I think part of this conversation is gonna move into ambiance and theming, but I was wondering if anybody else had the same feelings that I did about the actual food selection at the restaurant. Um, when I went in, I sat down and I expected, a, you're at the Living Seas right. Pavilion. You go in and the big, thing the catch for you is to go in and look at the fish while you're eating and so i expected a seafood restaurant right. and it really wasn't i don't feel like that was a seafood restaurant i felt like it was a really really good version of like maybe a steakhouse that has seafood on the side um because I, and i mentioned this in in the vlog that there was pork and chicken and mm -hmm. steak and fish, but not, it was all the wussy fish. Yeah. I don't even think it was <laughs> stuff that you could find in that tank. I mean, I don't expect them to go fishing while you <laughs> eat. You pick that but, one. <laughs> but I certainly was disappointed by the menu because I went in hoping beyond hope that they would have swordfish mm -hmm. so that I could figure out if I hated swordfish or if I hated yeah. 50s t prime time. Well, and honestly, out of all restaurants, you would think that's where it would be. Yes. Yeah, that's what's odd. The 50s diner had the swordfish, but Core Reef did <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah, and that's what I thought is that you have swordfish over at, you know, Cornhole Cafe in, you know, Teeny Bopper Park. <laughs> And then you come to the actual seafood restaurant, and there was probably swordfish in the it's stupid insane. tank, and I didn't get swordfish on my plate. So I think I was, as much as I liked the actual experience and the food in the, in the end, I was upset that it wasn't a true seafood restaurant. Did anybody else feel that way or care? I did notice that, for sure. And I was a little disappointed that, that there weren't more options. My only safe option, as far as seafood for me, was the salmon. But... Kind of universal wherever you go. So. Yeah. I, I completely agree because look, I don't like seafood, but if I go to a good seafood restaurant, then I can find things that I'm interested in. And when I looked over the menu, there just wasn't enough. And most of the things were things I worked, didn't really want to do. So um, it seemed like there was more pork, steak, and chicken, really, yeah. than you would expect. And I didn't see any pork, cows, or chicken swimming in the uh, <laughs> in the tank. So yeah. <laughs> Well, and I mean to that, it's you go into a true seafood restaurant on the coast, or even Red Lobster for crying out loud, yeah. and they've got the tanks, and you can actually pick your lobster. Uh, yeah. So I would have been like, yeah, I'd like that oh, swordfish. <laughs> Please, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So the overall score was seven, and I think we all agree on that. Um, let's move into the ambiance, atmosphere, and theming. We scored it an eight. Um, what are everybody's thoughts on the actual restaurant theming? I personally feel like if you could sit closer to the tank, it would be a better experience. We did see like scuba divers down in there, and that was fun. But there was a part of me that was a little apprehensive. That's probably too strong a word, but to see the fish and be eating a fish was a little unnerving. Although it shouldn't be because I knew it was there. So, but I would say, like, as it relates to theming, though, um, so I've got the aquarium, and I actually think that, I think you said before, the aquarium actually is the backdrop to the Nemo ride. And I, I think what they're doing is that it's, it's a very kind of adult contemporary, right, type of restaurant. And if I, so they didn't sell out on theming in terms of, well, let's 
cater to what you could do. Well, I, this is where I get stuck and I feel like the restaurant itself is stuck. There's, like we talked about, the hook of eating next to the aquarium, mm -hmm. which I think is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And we, you kind of sit in theater style, so it is supposed to be the center of it. And it's dim, so they're trying to set somewhat, in my opinion, of a romantic type of situation, sure. but didn't go far enough. Sure. Um, and so you get in there and you're like, am I supposed to feel romantic or am I supposed to feel, you know, or maybe not romantic, but elegant. Sure. But then you look at the blue and the those weird dots on the walls and the swirling yeah. lights on the ceiling and I, I don't know. I, I feel like either either jump into the elegance and put candles on the table and tablecloths and yeah. and and really kind of play up that side of it or jump to the other side. And this is just I, I would agree with you. It shouldn't it isn't it doesn't have to be Disney, but I, I was looking at those those uh, tanks, which really could have been screen TVs for all I knew, uh, how far back we were yeah. sitting. But I was looking at the tanks and I thought, why couldn't they do what they do on the ride where you've got Nemo uh, superimposed yeah. on the tank walls and then make it kind of a character meal where no, you see. incorporate Turtle Talk with Crush with what's going on behind it in the, in the um, tank and then you actually can have those characters interacting with the guests. Oh, that's cool. And I think it would become a more popular restaurant because we, it was empty. Yeah, that's what I was uh, going to say I too. just thought we didn't even need a reservation because it was completely empty. Yeah, and I think that's a that's a challenge. And that they, it is kind of a fence-sitting experience a little bit because I, I would, I was about to say, it depends on the audience. Like, if it were you and someone else and you're kind of looking for that kind of experience, you know, kind of romantic or subdued type of experience that makes it's well suited for that but these kids right did you know what popped what stood out um mm. it, did, it didn't really pop and yet it could and i just think that's a tough thing because i i do think if they played to the more family element you probably have a stronger yeah and if you that. if you looked at the tables and the settings it looked really similar to iggy's yeah and so even the furniture and the choices they've made there were not upscale to what i think that could be and so maybe disney could do character mm -hmm. um, lunches and then move to a more intimate dining and then put out the tablecloths and, mm -hmm. and kind of go that direction. And then it would fit the, the food. The food fits yep. yeah. a more yep. intimate and elegant type of thing. And I think if you watch back the travel vlog, I'm in there saying, you know, everybody's bored. And because mm -hmm. it was so quiet, we were all so quiet. But I think that's part of that was that kind of a restaurant. Yeah. And so we were just more subdued and there wasn't a lot of noise. So, you know, I think I think it's got some opportunities. The other thing I didn't like about it, apparently I'm really opinionated about this place because I've been going on. The other thing I didn't like about it is it is seriously off into a corner. And there's wow. no experience leading up to that restaurant. Yeah, sure. You just feel like you're walking in the back door of an aquarium. Mm -hmm. You're going down a long echoey hall that just is not, does not state what the restaurant's about. Sure. So I think there's some opportunity there for them to fix because it just didn't, all the way around it feels kind of caught in the middle. Yep, yep. agreed. Okay, with all of my complaints it still came out an eight and I probably gave it a nine. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, let's go on to service. Uh, as a group, we scored it at an eight. Again, a high score. Um, thoughts on service on our server? She was good. Um, it seemed like, I mean, you had soda brought to you. I don't think you needed, but. Favorable glasses. She wasn't really personable. She just got a job done. She was great. That's good. Which I, I also felt was part of that side of the restaurant. They're trying to be a higher scale restaurant sure. and you just don't interact with the servers that much sure. in those types of situations. Agreed. So, uh, value for dining service credit. We scored an eight. So it sounds like most of us with the exception of one person would recommend this as a way to use a dining point. I think it's good food. Just don't get the puff pastry dessert. I'm dying to know who that five is. Let me <laughs> Uh, was that me? <laughs> no, I'm wondering if it was me. No, don't, don't over me. No, I want it to be me because not a cover record. <laughs> so, we've discovered who scored it out of five, and it belongs to Aubrey! Ah! Oh! Explain yourself! Bad oh. mood. 
<laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot of sevens on there, and that makes some sense to me. We've talked about a lot of the reasons why we're far away from the aquarium. Uh, Food-wise, I think a lot of our dishes were good, not great. There were only a couple great things. I think Ray really kind of, on his ordering profile, did very well. And the desserts were really disappointing, um, with the exception of Ray's. So, um, <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's a fair score. It's like, I, I guess to me, if someone said they're going to Disney World, they're like, well, what do you think about Coral Reef? I'd be like, oh, okay, good. Go have a good time. I feel like uh, it's, it's worth it. I would recommend dinner there mm -hmm. because I felt like the food was heavier um, than what you'd want to eat for a lunch. Sure. It was creamy, lots of cream and cheese and steak yeah. and, you know. And so I would say do it, but use that service credit for an evening I think that's good advice. Uh, with your loved ones. Okay, so for the overall score at Coral Reef, we split it out. The food overall gets a 35% weight, the dining point value, and the entree get 15%. Then dessert, service, and ambience all weigh in at 10%, and the food presentation, we give a 5% weight of the score. So that gives our overall score from the Rocky Mountain Mouse crew to be Jody. 7.6. 7.6. So four stars from the Rocky Mountain Mouse group. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that is that is fairly good for, for what we experience. Any other final thoughts on the Coral Reef? If you were really to do a crap fest, I'm not sure this makes it. Do you feel that this, um, because AJ, the food blogger that we watch, ranks this as one of the lowest restaurants in Epcot, do you think? now that we've experienced it that that wasn't that that's adequate from her side do you think that aligns for me yes um but i could see why people would be higher on it like really you can only go off of what you ordered and the totality of what we tasted right and so for you if everyone had kind of had that degree of precision i think it may have been a little unfair but i think it is fair i think in relation to things you can do at epcot it's probably about right all right, well, that wraps it up for the Coral Reef today. We thank you for being part of this uh, discussion. Our next food review will be Yak and Yeti over at Animal Kingdom. So until then, have a great day. Bye.